Hi folks, good to be with you. Uh, we're looking at the Trinity and uh, we've looked at uh, a few topics and uh, I want to now go on to this book. A New Systematic Theology of the Christian Faith published by Dr. Robert L. Raymond Nelson Publishers this is probably one of the finest theological books that's been written to date. It's an excellent book and it's a wonderful resource. And I would encourage everybody to, to get a copy of this book. It's really, really good. So, without further ado, we're going to look at... going to look at the Trinity from um, we're going to look at the Son's eternal pre-existence page 230 uh, Raymond says this the last observation of Vos catapults us into the centre of controversy that is raging around the person of Christ. Did Jesus claim for himself pre-existence? And if so, in what sense? In the ontological sense or in the ideal for known sense? The Gospel of John witnesses that Jesus claimed pre-existence. Glorify me, Jesus prayed, with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was, John 17, verse 1 and 5. Indeed, with my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. John 17, 24. This claim on Jesus' part to an external existence with his Father is not an aberration, for he speaks elsewhere, though in somewhat different terms of the same pre-existence. John chapter 3, verse 13. No one has ascended into heaven, but he who descended from heaven, even the Son of Man. John six thirty eight. I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of of him who sent me. See also John 6 33, 50, 38. John 6 46. No one has seen the Father except him from para, uh, the Greek uh, para with the genitive that is from the side of the Father. In other words, no one has seen the Father except him who is with the Father. John 6 62. What if you were to see the Son of Man extend him where he has before? What if you were to see the Son of Man extended where he was before? Uh, the Greek is to uh, proteron. John 8, 23, you are from below, I am from above, you are from this world, I am not from this world. That's John 8, 23. John 8, 38, I speak of what I have seen with the Father. John 8, 42, I come out and came forth from God, the Greek with genitive. John 16, 28, I came out from the Father and have come into the world. But perhaps the greatest assertion to eternal pre-existence is to be found in Jesus' I am sayings of John 8, 30, 58. Most of his I am sayings, it is true, are supplied with subjective, a subjective complement of some kind, such as I am the bread of life, John 6, 35, 48 and 51. I am the light of the world, John 8, 12, 9, and chapter 9 and 5. Uh, I am the door of the sheep, John 10, verse 7 and 9. I am the good shepherd, John 10, 11, 14. I am the resurrection of the life, John 11, 25. I am the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, 6. And I am the vine, John 15, 1, 5. But according to D.A. Carson, two undoubtedly absolute in form, both form and content. Two are undoubtedly absolute in both form and content and constitute an explicit self-identification with the Yahweh who had already revealed himself to men with similar terms. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 10 and 11. The two sayings Carson refers to are in John 8, 58 and John 13, 19. 
but there could well be others such as his I am usage in John 6:20, 8, 24, 28, 18, verse 5 and 8. In John 8, 58, standing before men who regarded him as a demoniac, Jesus declared, before Abraham was, I am, invoking not only the term which Yahweh in the Old Testament had chosen as his own special term of self-identification, but claiming also a pre-existence before Abraham was, appropriately only to one possessed of the nature of Yahweh. His meaning was not lost on his audience, for they took up stones to throw him throw at him, John 8, 59. They understood that Jesus was claiming divine pre-existence for himself and thus making himself equal with God. In that case of his I am in John 3, 19, Jesus himself expl explicated its implication for his unity with the Father and in turn his own Yahwistic identity when he declared in the following verse, he who receives me receives me who sent me. In John 6.20, by his I am, I am, be not afraid, Jesus admittedly might have been simply identifying himself to be to his terrified disciples, but as Carson notes, yet not every eye could be found walking on water. Then in John 8.24, following immediately, as it does, his declaration that he was from above and not of this world, Jesus I am in his statement, if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins, surely carries with it divine implications. Finally, in the case of I am in John 18, 5, 8, as soon as he uttered these words, his, his would-be captors drew back and fell back up to the ground. John surely intended to suggest by this that his readers were to recognise in Jesus' acknowledgement that he was Jesus of Nazareth, also implicit self-identification with Yahweh.